And now, it's Adam and Joe. Hello and welcome to the big British castle. It's time for Adam and Joe to broadcast on the radio. There'll be some music and some random talking in between. And then eventually the whole thing will just end. Oh, what's up, what's up, what's up? Hello, my name is David. I'm David Bowie. I live in space and occasionally I come to Earth. I've got fairies in my garden. I live inside the garden. I'm talking to the fairies right now. No, I'm not. I'm from the future. Oh dear, I've come back in time to destroy your world. And was that, was that, was... Could stop me? Well, <laughs> I'm never ever gonna stop you. <laughs> I want it to go on forever. You know, it could go on forever. It could, couldn't it? <laughs> like, um, good morning, listeners. Uh, my name's Joe Cornish. Hi, I'm Adam Buxton. And uh, welcome to our Saturday morning show here at the Big British Castle. We hope you've all had a lovely Halloween evening last night. Mm. Adam, and I, Adam and I drove through Camden together, as we like to do on a Friday night, <clears throat> holding hands mm -hmm. at midnight. Singing to each other. It was a crazy bacchanalia wasn't it it was a wild crazy scene there was people all made up like skeletons people have gone costume crazy i think it's the biggest halloween ever ever in the uk on record on record, on record exactly yeah. statistics since show. records began since re since halloween records began what, what scale of measure do they use terror fear uh, heart, national heart rate uh you know effort that people put right. into the costume the effort scale well yeah. people have gone costume crazy the and whole uh, american thing has completely crossed over fully now hasn't it mm. adults are dressing up uh the kiddies are dressing up the teens oh them kids sure know how to party cool oh, they certainly do these days you know they're crazy about it <laughs> <laughs> they love to drink and talk and do the other don't they things. and they were all doing it in camden last night we were there was a bit of a jam through the main camden uh lock area mm. traffic was shunting quite slowly mm. giving drunken costumed revelers the opportunity to try and terrify the occu occupants of cars with various gurning leaping yeah. and hood smashing that's right there was a party guy wandering around yeah. wasn't he and he ran up to a, the windscreen of a car and he, he made a face in the car he did window <laughs> which is wrong it is wrong uh, because disgusting. That there should be accident. a greater police presence they should make costumes illegal well they should get rid of halloween they should get rid of halloween because it's it's evil i mean and imagine the confusion uh, and the number of robberies that could be caused by people in costumes. I'm surprised, given the uh, proper health and safety procedures that mm, are now mm, in place mm, in many mm, mm, areas of life, mm. that Halloween is allowed to continue. Mm. It is a stop. Let's start help. that campaign Let's here. Let's start it here. Because yeah. we can get the Daily Mail involved. It's mm -hmm. a health and safety nightmare. Let's get that ball rolling. Certainly. Um, lots of terrific stuff com coming up, I think. I mean, when I say that, I don't actually know that there's anything terrific Also, you said up. terrific. Well, that's... People love the word <laughs> terrific. Uh, yeah. Let's play some more music and then we can, uh, talk a little is bit more Is it terrific music? Halloween. It, funnily enough, it is. It's MGMT oh, with kids. Terrific. Fun sounds, pop sounds, that's MGMT with kids. Do they Joe? ever make you think of Hale and Pace? MGMT? Yeah. In what way? The management. <laughs> Why? Isn't that what oh, MGMT see, stands course, for? Yeah, management. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that what it stands for? Well, I guess it could do. They certainly. should do a. They should do a duet with Hale and Pace. That's a good idea. It's very fashionable at the moment to do a, a duet with someone very unfashionable. What you do know? you mean, Hale and Pace are unfashionable? No, Hale and Pace aren't unfashionable. Oh, MGMT are yeah. unfashionable. <laughs> Got you. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> for instance, Roots Manoeuvre has announced he's doing a duet with James Blunt. Well, yeah. Have you yeah. heard that? No, that's a good idea, though, isn't it? Yeah, I think, especially with hip-hoppers who uh, don't like any sense of prejudice or bias in music, mm. they think it should be a kind of a level playing field. Uh, to do a duet with someone really unexpected is is good. Right, that is a good idea. Mm. Who else could they have gone for, do you think? Uh, who? Management? No, um, well, uh, like if you're a, if it's you're just a cool you artist, right, a cool right. artist. Well, who's that? Like, think of a cool artist first. Well, of all. I would go. I would go for S Club Seven, as as, as a, a cool as artist. A cool artist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now ask and me another would, question. And they would duet with who? <laughs> Scooch. Uh, they would <coughs> no, because uh, Scooch are cool as well. That's true. You need an uncool act. Yeah. So they would duet <laughs> with. I don't know who's the coolest. Act? MGMT. They're the coolest act on the block, aren't yeah. they? Uh, no, Vampire Weekend. Vampire. That's a good. That's a good example. Uh, S Club of Seven. S Club Juniors and uh vampire weekend that would blow people's heads apart yeah. if it was really good as well don't you think 
that's that's the big important sentence there though isn't it if it was really good yeah well, they'll, they'll get <laughs> kathy dennis to that's, write one or something that's the bit that you can't fulfill kathy dennis or uh, nick kershaw exactly one yeah. of the good or, or gary barlow right one of the nation's best loved songwriters secret, one of the invisible secret wizards right. of oz the hit hobbits the, wiz- <laughs> the what the hit hobbits <laughs> why are they hobbits because they live in a little you know pop hole do they yeah and they pen hits it's exciting news. for other people um, pretty soon, listeners, will be giving you the uh, result of last week's Spooky Song Wars. Oof. Is it going to be a tight one this week? I don't think it is. You reckon? Uh, I don't know. There's no There's no telling, um, says Joe, having looked through most of the emails <laughs> and collated the results in his head. But I'm not going to give the listeners a hint um, of, of what the answer could be. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a level playing field. It's anybody's game. Joe did a song about ghosts. Joe did. Miss Joe did a song. Miss Joe done a song. <laughs> he done a song. Why is he allowed to do a song I'm not? I want to do a song too, miss. <laughs> you did do a song. It was very good. I did a song about a nutty room. Yeah, those results coming up pretty soon. Uh, what about some music now? Just to oh, yeah. keep everybody perky. I've got a little uh, free play for you. It's a nice mellow one now. Oh, that's good for the first hour. <sighs> and I've been, um, <sighs> you know, like I, I've been moving house for the last couple of months. It's mm. taking ages. It's it happening is, isn't it? very You're gradually. Doing it one object at a time. More or less, yeah. Mm. And um, I'm still sort of reorganising things, and and it's a nice opportunity to listen to music while it's you're. A great, it's a nice opportunity to listen to you talking about moving house. Yeah, but no, don't you find like when you're organising things and putting mm. things on shelves and sorting your stuff out, it's nice to listen to a bit of music. What's your favourite? Oh, definitely album too. Have you got an album that you always fall back on for when you're working on other things? Uh, at the moment I'm listening to that Raphael Sadiq album a lot. Right. Well, mm. Scott Walker, Scott Four, you know, which is a classic album. Mm. I mean, everyone likes that one. Mm. Uh, I've just been playing it over and over again, and you, you, you never get bored of it. It's amazing. Or well, one never gets bored of it, may mm. I say. And this is a lovely track from there. It's called Rhymes of Goodbye. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> That's Jarvis Cocker with Fat Children. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Jarvis, of course, sat in for Stephen Merchant on... Uh, last Sunday, Merchant mm. still being away, and he did an amazing show that you can listen to via the BBC iPlayer, or you can download a podcast of it on the Six Music website. It was all Jarvis mood music, right? So it was all sort of quite downbeat music, mm-hmm. but cumulatively, apparently, it became amazingly uplifting right. in a profound way. I'm looking forward to that. Jarvis, of course, sporting quite a um, hairy beard. Quite a long one. Uh, it's just a, it's the sort of the, it's a beard of a man that shouldn't really have a beard. And I don't mean that he shouldn't have the beard, but you, it's not, it doesn't really, it's kind of crazy. It looks like a fake beard. It looks like cat weasel or something. Yes. Yeah. You've lost your beard, Adam Buxton. Currently lost it, it's it. It's important for listeners to know that so they can picture you. The beard comes and goes. Yeah. There's a, a, a men's magazine on, on the stalls at the wow. moment. I'm not, yeah, that's the that's end. Finally, finally, Adam there's a magazine music. for men. What kind of stuff's it got in it? Uh, it's got a man on the cover who has, who looks a bit like you, if you were a bit taller. <laughs> <laughs> and it says something like, the great British male. Mm-hmm. And he's not a famous man, he's, I don't think, I think he's just a man, maybe he's a sportsman, I don't know anything about sports, so he could be sporting, I don't recognise him, Mm. but he's the archetypal current British man. Right. He is what you have to look like to be, you know, completely on on the money as a bloke, and he's wearing a black suit and a a black tie and a white shirt, and he's got a sort of very black hair and, and a beard, a big black beard and sort of slick back hair, and he looks a bit like he could be your more handsome older brother (laughs) (laughs) i've got a more handsome younger brother um Mm. but he doesn't have a beard being silly you're very handsome thank you very much i should grow back i always lose the beard at the wrong points i should grow it back but um oh well there you go i'm on the right track though right yeah well done thank you very much moving forward um okay now uh here's a bit more music for you listeners this is susie and the banshees with happy house that's not happy house that's just old 1980s style sort of goth indie music did you describe it as happy house well it's, oh, called, it's called happy, happy house. house so it's very misleading i think and it's prescient should... though yeah she got the phrase right yeah which is good 
but she didn't get the sound of the music right. No, I suppose. Halfway there, I suppose. Could do a good Happy House remix of that, though. Well, yeah, that's a good yeah, idea. That's a good that's idea. That's a very good that's idea. That's a very good that's idea. That's a really good Well done. Are you going to get onto it this afternoon? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do it now. I've done it. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't very good. I've oh, thrown it away. That's a shame. Things move pretty fast uh, yeah. in, in the 24-hour-a-day news blogosphere. Certainly do. Mm. Hey, man, I turned up this morning to work. I know here. you did. Um, and here I am. What do you think? I think that's one of the best stories I've ever heard. Now, I turned up this morning uh, to Western House here in uh, central London where we do uh, the show. And uh, I was all excited because I thought maybe there was going to be camera people outside because all week on the news. I don't know what's been happening. But there have been, like, news people outside talking to DJs. I thought maybe they'd be outside this morning. So I um, put on some smarter clothes than I would normally have worn. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? <laughs> yes. Are you serious? A little bit. You're not dressed smart. <clears throat> Well, did you do your hair? Did you take a moment extra to preen yourself? Well, you know, we went out li last night to this Halloween party, and I I wore a uh, skeleton makeup. Mm. I painted my face all black. You look and good, man. Thanks a lot. Took me ages, and I, I I put loads of like black lipstick and everything all over myself. We should make it clear that you were doing yourself like a like a skull. Yes, exactly. Like a guy from Live and Let Die. That's right. A voodoo kind of priest. Kind so of all man. around my eyes, I had the big black look uh, really good sockets. You know. So I was trying to wash out, scrubbing and scrubbing, and I woke up this morning and and it looked as if I had eyeliner on. It looked as if I was some old fat member of the Cure <laughs> with eyeliner. So I thought, oh no, I can't turn up at work for the camera people. They might ask me my opinion about things <laughs> and film me. <laughs> so I scrubbed it off. I was scrubbing, scrubbing. I thought, oh no, no, there's still a little bit on there. I've got to get it off, otherwise I'll be on the news. My mum will see me and she think she'll think I've joined the Cure. That'll never do. I've turned into Alan Carr. Um, so, yeah, it was all, it didn't, it, there was no one I there. think you should carry on doing the Alan Carr voice. <laughs> we you might, think? we might get some telly work. So that's a good idea, isn't it? <laughs> okay, well, it's time for the news now. What'll happen in the news, though, I don't know, is Nicky Cardwell to tell you. Bit of kinks there, Waterloo Sunset. He would have been pleased with that when he'd finished it, I would imagine. Mm. Ray Davis. Mm. Pat on the back from Ray. Gave himself one. Yeah, definitely. Mm. Do you ever do that? Uh, give myself a pat on the back. Yeah. No, I tend to, uh, I tend to do a little cheer, like that. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Do you say yes, yes. sometimes? <laughs> or just silent, silently wave your I'm hands I'm from the, the Tom Cruise generation, you know, what, and that's what, what Tom what would that do. Term yes. Oh, right, punch the air. Yes, yeah, 80s. Yeah. Ever, do you ever jump? He, he might jump in the air and click his little heels there. Uh, I don't think he'd do that. Yes, he that's would. That's more of a vaudevillian thing. Oh, I think he would. Do you think he would? Definitely. Uh, he would click his little uh, heels. His little leprechaun, leprechaun. style <laughs> heels. Oh! Hoofs. Uh, his hoofs. <laughs> um, that's another story. Yeah. Uh, yes, no, what? Yeah. Listen, I give myself, a, I, I just, just to conclude that, mm. I give myself a pat on the back. Well done. You I deserve reach, a pat on the back. I reach round, I pat myself on the back. Do you? Yeah. Does that feel good? It does. Glad that's over. I didn't deserve it just there. Didn't I you? was just demonstrating. I well, you've ruined the whole thing I've done so. nothing to deserve a pat on the back this week at all. No. <laughs> song Wars? Yes, please. We have the jingle. It's time for Song Wars. The war of the songs. A couple of tunes by a couple of proms. Which will you vote for? Which one is the best? We're putting our songs to the listener test. So check it out. Joe's just run out of the room. He just went, oh, Phil. He's going to get some things. He's back. I just printed out some um, emails we got from listeners. So oh. Song Wars, just to recap, listeners, was spooky last week. Our challenge was to write scary songs. And uh, Joe wrote one about a ghost, what yes. it was like being a ghost, a kind of conversation with a ghost. Mm, it um, was called Hello, Mr. Ghost. And mine was called Nutty Room, and it was a, a jazzy number about a kind of serial killer's lair. Yeah, and we've had various uh, email responses. Thank you to everyone who emails the show. I read every single email. That's true. I really do. And if, if any are pertaining to Adam, I pass them on to him. So your missives, uh, you know, don't go unread. No, certainly. Every single one gets absorbed into, into the mind sponge. <laughs> uh, and here's one that came in from Andy Clark. I vote for Adam's nutty song, A Worthy Effort. Joe's song is a travesty, and he should be deeply ashamed. That's a bit much, though, isn't it? I mean, I'm pleased that he likes mine, but deeply ashamed. Chris Beely says, Hello, I vote for Joe's song, Hello, Mr. Ghost, or whatever it was called. Neither was very spooky. Joe's was better. I, yeah, they, that's, they often do that, don't they? They say, bit weak this week. I suppose if I'm going to be forced to choose one, I'll 
go for Joe's or Adam's, blah, blah, blah. Well, it just shows that there's no accounting for taste, you know. Right. You can't, you like, can't, you can't get some, be a taste accountant. You can't hire a taste accountant. No. Well, that's a shame. Um, and Stephen Tappin says, difficult one this week. Adam's is very funny. Oh, you know what? I've printed out all the ones that are, that are pro-me. <laughs> 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 because I thought there were going to be so few, I thought I could just literally thank personally <laughs> right. the three or four people who voted for me but actually there's slightly too many to make that interesting so anyway here's the results and and this week i'm very excited because they're in an actual official bbc uh envelope mm. this is part of the corporation as a whole pulling its socks up i assume quite right uh let's open the envelope overdue. long overdue <laughs> i think it's a <laughs> foregone conclusion 86 percent plays 14 percent to whom to you oh now this is looking pretty bad for me isn't it i mean i've had a i've had a pretty extensive you've only been back on the job song wars wise two weeks though haven't you like no even one when, when was the last time you did a song uh, wars not thing for a while are you do you think i should blame it on garth jennings no you should you've got to keep your hand in is the answer with song wars what do you mean oh you would just keep doing it every yeah, week yeah, yeah. yeah i have been working very hard during i'm not the week. blaming you you could know if, you, if you if you if i could tell you what i've been doing during the week i've been working hard too you know not and i managed to me. do the songs not as hard as much me. harder than you and not on much more important things but do garth's um sir please mr producer do Garth's songs, uh, are, they, are, are his victories mine? What are you talking about? Well, when he won while I was away, does that go on my scorecard? Sir, can you just shut Cornish sir, up and play my sir. song, which has won this week? Sir, sir, Cornish. Sir, this is a travesty. Sir, just and play I'm my song, sir. complain about this. Nutty. I am a nutty man. I'm sitting in my nutty room. I'm a cutting. Some bits of human skin to make it to a big cocoon. It's true for the cops and I'm pulling out the stops Because I am a complicated loon Look at the jars, look at the jars, look at the things inside the jars I put some fingers there, some hair and several winkies Look at the walls, look at the walls, totally covered in crazy scrolls And from time to time I add a couple of stinkies I love the smell and the gloom of my crazy empty room Come on over for some tables and some drinkies It's so wonderful to meet you in you come Welcome to my nutty lair <laughs> Careful of the pit, mind the pile of shit. have a seat on the bed of human hair. I hope you like injections, some butterfly collections, and the work of the performer Leo Sam. Crazy, have you ever seen a person who was so completely nuts? Lazy, oh no, I'm always working, making coping out of other people's guts. Patrick Swayze. <laughs> Very good. Uh, Adam's winning Song Wars Song Nutty Room. Uh, yeah, you really um, knocked me for six there. Well, you know, I, in my book it was close. I liked your song. I love my song. And you know what? Sometimes music, really good music, oh, here we go. takes a while <laughs> for you to, to get your head round, you know? Albums that you put in and you play and you think, oh, this is a smash, you'll be bored yeah. in the following week. Yeah. Something really g good music. Uh, should I carry on? No. Or should I stop? So we were thinking, listeners... The other thing is, oh. uh, my song had ultrasonic bass that many less, uh, you know, smaller radios wouldn't have been able to pick up. It was dub reggae and the dub wouldn't have come through on it. Oh, radios. Right, so. right, right. I should have won. Okay, um, so we were thinking next time for Song Wars listeners, uh, we might do, like, uh, theme tunes for TV, like, new theme tunes for TV shows, right? Right, if there's a TV show out there that you think needs a new, uh, theme tune. Yeah. Needs, re its theme tune needs refreshing, then email your suggestion to us, Adam and Joe, uh, dot six music at bbc dot co dot uk, and we'll have a go. Will we choose a different one each? uh well not necessarily i mean we could we could just sort of nobody knows no we're no gonna play it by ear we'll see what suggestions we get exactly uh for tv shows that need new off the top tunes. of your head which would you go for just well i might i might try a new blue peter theme oh i i understand they're You're in a bit of a pickle blue peter. i am a bit obsessed with yeah. blue peter i understand i might be wrong but i read somewhere that they're in a bit of a pickle with the theme tune they've used the wrong hornpipe 
or something. No one likes the wrong hornpipe. No, so I might, and, and, you know, I might make it even more up to date and, and modern than it already is. Ah, I want to do a new theme for Richard and Judy. Right. For their show. What is there? Because they've got a new show on, um, on, uh, Sky Telly or whatever, on, on, li- what, what, uh, on what used that? to be non terrestrial. Watch? Yeah. Is it called? It's called Watch, yeah. yeah. What's, what's, the, what's the theme tune like now? You know, I couldn't tell you. It's uh, it's sort of jazzy and sexy. I That's think. why they need a new one. Well, exactly, a I memorable think one. One with lyrics, because how many theme tunes have lyrics? Not really very many. Do not they? enough these days. Uh, I mean, I can't think of any. Can the classic theme tunes always had lyrics. You know, Dad's Army. Yeah. Uh, Only fools and horses. Um, Everybody loves a little song. Grange Hill, of Butterflies. course. Butterflies. Gora Ange Hill. Welcome to the school. The kids are playing a fool. <laughs> <laughs> do you remember that one? Yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah, it was great. great well, that's the, no, <laughs> <laughs> that would be another one uh, we could do just to put lyrics. That would be even lazier. That would be to put lyrics to theme music that didn't already have lyrics. Oh, that's quite tempting, that isn't would it? Be easy peasy. We wouldn't have to, but we could add extra noises. We wouldn't be able to play them on the podcast, though, wouldn't we? Nah. What if they were BBC shows? Big British. Hello, possible. hello, hello. That's an advantage of the castle, isn't it? All right, so try and think of BBC shows a little bit, men, maybe listeners. Maybe. Well, do, I think we should keep it as the original thing. Email right. in suggestions for shows that you think need an entirely new, uh, theme tune or closing credit tune. And that's what we're gonna go for. Yeah. Okay, here's some real music. This is, uh, Last Shadow Puppets with My Mistakes Were Made For You. Very good. That's Fun Boy 3 with Tunnel of Love. This is Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. That was a BBC session. Was it? Uh, yeah, from 1983. I remember my brother buying that single. Right. In in 83 it would have been, and uh, I found it very disturbing and depressing as a record, lyrically. Because your parents were going to break up and stuff like that. No, my parents are still very happy. I know, married. I know, but it, but it, the, the threat of divorce, hey. It introduced the whole notion right. of divorce and the idea that love could be a journey into doom. Mm. For a child, that's a, a profound and unsettling thought. Yeah, exactly. I thought love was lovely. Didn't you have lots of friends who were, their parents were getting divorced? Yes, I did it was, it was all kicking off, like, when we were in the, uh, early 80s, it was, that was the thing. Divorce it, was the fashion. Everyone was getting divorced. You know divorced. what, I used to envy, uh, people with divorced parents. Right, why? Because I used to envy the fact that both parents doted over them. Mm-hmm. And they always seem to get more crisps and sweets. It's double presents. Have more freedom. Yeah. Yeah, there was something kind of glamorous about the, you know, the sa- the sadness. <laughs> to me really <laughs> right it's weird and it's obviously wrong but uh it's true yeah yeah there you go you're insane i'm mad you're mental no i know what you mean uh so we were talking about um something different uh earlier on this, uh, this morning <laughs> listeners uh by way of a clumsy segue mm-hmm. um uh procrastination routines yes right um joe, joe was talking about the fact that he went off uh to amsterdam this week to mm. try and do a little bit of writing what was your thinking there just um you know get a different um place maybe i'll do some work yeah i wanted to get different away from place. all distractions right uh hole up in a little uh apartment garret a garret uh somewhere with eateries close by mm. so i got a little garret in the jordan the nine streets very nice uh area mm-hmm. but i did i got almost nothing done nice uh i procrastinated incredibly yeah i just couldn't concentrate at all what's your favorite bit of procrastination technique uh cleaning mm-hmm. i can only work when the entire house is spotless really from floor to ceiling yeah what get the hoover out and everything mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. a bit of window lean as mm-hmm. well uh no i wouldn't go as far as the windows no. usually it's it's just my office i have to have the office absolutely in perfect order yeah my little writing area before i can do any work yeah that's a good one i do some cleaning sometimes mm. very very seldom <laughs> obviously the I- invention of computers has brought a whole lot of new uh w- which the computers have been invented it happened about 20 years ago right mm. and that brought a whole lot of uh, what i mean is the the uh, internet having that on your desktop that's yeah. terrible for procrastination isn't it well exactly i mean you've got the, the routine is you start off you check your email yeah and then you go online to check various things that affect you online, mm. whether they're social networking sites or whatever. Mm. Uh, mm. Check your progress on your social networking mm. site, YouTube, etc., mm. etc. Et mm. Maybe you got messages on YouTube. Maybe you got messages on your Facebook mm. or your MySpace. Check your emails again. Check every single bookmark in your in your bookmark. Absolutely. For the latest news. See if anyone's you know all the blog roll stuff. And this is now eaten away. What forty five minutes maybe at least. Yeah, you 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 decided you were going to start work at six. It's now six forty five. Time for a snack. Well, uh, and a couple more emails will have come in as well. Absolutely. Boom. 
that need to be replied to. Be Time for a snack. That's a very good idea. Oh, I'm so hungry after all that. And then you get thirsty yeah, after look, the snack. Of course you need that. You need back to go back upstairs. Back upstairs for a little bit of... Bit of mm. thinking, back downstairs for a bit of drinking. Exactly. Mm. Get a nice cl- tall glass of water. Oh, that's lovely. Mm. That's delicious. Oh, I need to go to the loo now. Mm. Go to the loo. Oh, nice magazine. I'll read the magazine on the loo for a little bit. This is <laughs> nice. That's nice. Okay, right. Back to work. Check the emails first. You're right about Make going sure. to the loo. Yeah. I go to the loo a lot. Absolutely. You got Maybe to. that it's tied in with the drinking. Yeah, because you think nice glass of water it's good to drink lots of water you know you've got to drink 28 pints a day otherwise mm, you'll mm. die so i'll have a bit more water that's good mm. this is good good for working good for working okay <laughs> uh back to the loo go to the loo read a bit more of the magazine that's an interesting article i didn't know that that's amazing okay back to work now check the emails has anything come in time to check the emails i'll just check the social networking sites one more mm. time because someone do, might um, sent me a beer bottle i like to ego surf as well you know how much i like to ego yeah surf. you love it i can t- i can take <laughs> out an hour and a half with ego surfing <laughs> adam and said joe what six music into google return. adam and joe sell outs no that's not true i i refuse to believe it oh adam and joe are geniuses that's true i like to check our our um position on the podcast charts yeah i like to check for any new reviews uh, on on the podcast site on iTunes, right? By which time your desk is a bit messy, so you got to reorganise it again. Yeah. Reorganise the desk, and, and of maybe... course there's the cat, my cat. Okay. Feed the cat. She needs to be fed. Constant harassment, yeah. being let out. And while you're reorganising, you think, you know what? This is not the best system. I've not got the best system here. I should I should create a new kind of filing system. This stuff should go over here. While I'm at it, why are these CDs not alphabetized? Mm-hmm. It's insane. Mm-hmm. I've got them organised by genre. Alphabetically, it would be much better. That's only going to take me an hour. I'll do that and then back to work. And after that, I'll just check my emails and then back to work. I tell you what. I've got no emails, but I need to do a little bit of research yep. before I get idea. back to research. work. Research, Wikipedia, something. Yeah, exactly. And then just get really interested in it, and follow a different line of yeah. inquiry. At which point, time for another snack. Of which time it's the end of the day, <laughs> <laughs> probably. <laughs> of which time it's it's four thirty, and it's time for some booze. <laughs> time for some booze. <laughs> Typical it's tea day. time. It's the day with the genius. Exactly. Does anybody does anybody in the world not do that? Of course. I mean, well, uh, presumably the people that actually get things done. Well, people who have <laughs> jobs that don't require, you know, that, that are just systematic. Yeah. Uh, that are like organisational or something. Like, you could just d- do that kind of on autopilot, don't you think? Well, you've got it. yes, you've got a task. It's when it mean. It, it's when you have to think. Mm-hmm. Conjure from nowhere. Yeah, That's the problem, isn't really it? Oh, it's really difficult. Um, here's a bit of a free play for you listeners. This is Joe chose this is one. It? Nice mellow track from oh, Van yeah, Morrison. Oh, yeah, this is uh, Van Morrison. He's a grumpy Irish solster. Uh, this is called Crazy Love. Gloria Jones there with her cover of the Soft Cell classic Tainted Love. Uh, this is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. You know, one of the nicest things about uh, it getting very cold yeah. is its hotty body weather. Hotty? Hotty body. Oh, hot water bottle. Yes. Hot, do you not call them hotty bodies? <laughs> what else is there to call them? Hot bot. Yeah. Hotty body. Do you, how do you refer to them? Um, toasty, a boiling liquid sack. Toasty rubber sack. Toasty rubber sack. No, seriously, how do you say? Do you use them? Do you a hottie? A, ho- a hottie, a hottie exactly. is what is what my mum used to call them. I think yeah. everybody calls them hottie hottie bodies. I've never heard hottie body. Come on, no, because it's misleading. You might be thinking of bottoms. That's what I was thinking of when you said that. Well, nice that's thing the, about that's winter is, is your hot bottom. What? <laughs> hot body hotty body what Do anyway you, um have you had one yet this year no you know i haven't had one for ages i'm talking I'm... about a hot bottle yeah sure uh i've got one right now but no hot water bottle mm. ha- i'm not a big fan aren't you no i don't like the heat i prefer the cold i rejoice really? when the winter comes i know around. what you mean actually they can yeah. get too hot hotty bodies because then you have to uh, you know i'm i'm the kind of person that likes to kick the duvet or the or the sheets if i'm in a hotel or whatever Untuck uh, them. Untuck them, certainly, and have my feet sticking out mm, at the end. Mm, mm. I don't want a big, hot thing. There. You're right about h- hotty bodies. They're, t- they can't, they're too hot at first. Mm. Why do they say on them, do not use boiling water? Well, because then it would make it outrageously too hot. No, but also, if it who bursts... Doesn't you, who doesn't fill a hot water bottle with boiling water? Well, then, for legal you reasons, they boil a covered. kettle. Yeah, of course. And you pop it in. Pop it in there. You've got to be very careful filling them. Do you try and fill it right to the top? Well, not only do I fill it right to the top, I don't fill it up so it's bursting. Yeah. I fill it with maybe a third of a kettle. And then my dad, when I was a child, taught me to be very careful to squeeze the rest of the air out. Mm. 
so the hot water rises to the lip of the of 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 the hotty body it's a dangerous game because, because if there's air in it it'll make it go colder sure, faster sure but but then when you're squeezing trying to get all the air out you mustn't let the hot water spit into your eye sometimes you, you can squeeze too vigorously too vigorously and then maybe if you're in your gym jams or maybe nude <laughs> you've just gone down to the kitchen in the nude and you're making a hotty body your whole <laughs> <laughs> your whole body is vulnerable yeah that's very dangerous and then where the other question is where does the hearty potty go in the bed do you do you have it next to your breasticular area mm -hmm. do you squeeze it between your feet between your thighs but is that where you put it between your thighs generally yeah it's too hot though burn your thighs yeah but i'm not this is one thing i was going to ask you mm. you're not just using the naked rubber bottle are you no no you have to have a cover are you uh, what have you got a bespoke cover we or have do you just wrap covers. a towel we have there. a lovely floral cover so hotty body number one mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and number two is a big pig uh, we were given it at christmas i think my mum gave it to us it's a big pig with a bow tie that's nice is it is it's it nice. <laughs> is it furry is it fluffy fur oh pig sure fur. it's fluffy i like that uh, it's not he's a very smart pig that's a good idea but you know what uh i find hot water bottles they're just too hot you mm -hmm. i have to have it about two feet away from me yeah and then heating up a sort of foot square area of the bed getting it molten melting the the mattress mm -hmm. and then i roll onto that spot very nice and move the hot water bottle to where i was do you know yeah. what i mean yeah yeah so it's like a sort of a hot spot it's as if dobby the house elf with a very hot bottom Mm -hmm. has been crouched on the bed warming it up well that's revolting why there's well, nothing just, revolting about the dobby. idea of dobby being there in your Forget bed dobby. i shouldn't have introduced dobby i mean maybe I that's trying to what, make a hot bot connection. perhaps that's what harry potter does he just doesn't need hot bots anymore because he's got dobbles <laughs> <laughs> that would be quite disturbing wouldn't it between his <laughs> it's thighs it's a really cold night he clamps in between his little come on dobby thighs. i'm ruddy freezing in this bed dobby hey, <laughs> voldemort's left the window open voldemort is he the head of hogwarts <laughs> he will be by the end of the next film voldemort's left the window open my thighs are ruddy freezing he doesn't say ruddy he might do he's feeling particularly edgy <laughs> dobby crawls between his thighs clamps in between his thighs oh thank you very much master oh dobby dobby bad dobby bad dobby <laughs> you're bad dobby <laughs> other way round dobby your head towards the bottom of the bed dobby oh. here's some music for Naughty you dobby <laughs> this is coldplay with jay-z featuring uh let's let's have a listen i haven't heard this this is lost it's the mighty coldplay with lost featuring jay-z so sounding very uh hy hymnal him him mm. it, himic mm -hmm. what's the word for something that is like a hymnal hymn? is good hymnal mm. uh that was nice that was enjoyable what's jay-z going on about uh st i i think you observed correctly that he was rhyming a lot of s c's wasn't he well he did he not talk about cbbc at one point <laughs> something like that the children's uh branch of the bbc um I don't know. Well, we, maybe we'll try and uh, find. Yeah, I don't think he said CBBC. He did say C. He was talking C about C. Lizzo on CBBC. Yeah, exactly. He's a fan of Lizzo. <laughs> Who's Lizzo? Who's Lizzo? Yeah. He's the CBBC's top reporter. Okay, sorry. Come on. I know Poi Fan Lee. Is yeah, she's well, she's CBBS. Is not CBBC the same thing? No. CBBS is for babies. Oh. CBBC is for children. Sorry. Yeah, who can, like, talk and understand ideas. Yeah. Whereas CBBS is just, like, variously different men in costumes running I'm more of a CBBS around. person. <laughs> People who it's can more soothing. <laughs> think and understand ideas. That's a tough one. Hey, listen, you know we were just talking about uh, Dobby the House Elf. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I want to make a film um starring all the worst cgi characters i've only got two so far dobby and jar jar binks yeah but you'd get all the really disastrous cgi characters and they'd all be living on an island together it would be called C cg island nice and uh, i don't know what would happen but it would be really good and it'd be really moving because they're so rev re reviled I'm trying to think of other ones. There must be some more. Some really bad ones. But you mean um, CG characters in live-action films? Yeah. You can't have Shrek on there. Uh, you could have Shrek, but he's too successful. Yeah. Un he's unaccountably successful. I I'm not a Shrek fan myself. <sighs> oh, I know it's a controversial <sighs> thing to say. The Shrek films look as if they've been painted out of vomit. 
<laughs> don't they that's the palette though isn't it it's yeah. the lurid um you know sort of fantasy palette that they're going but for. jar jar binks uh he was a disaster they introduced him with a big fanfare and quickly this went back very on themselves. controversial stuff. Dobby the house elf, he was going to be one of the key characters in <laughs> Harry Potter, but they got rid of him as, as quickly as they could. Did they? Yeah. Dobbles? Dobbles. With his funny long nose. I think it, it would be inexpensive to buy the options to those characters. Right. Already got a, ma a large public awareness. Uh, we should make, and we make a series about mm -hmm, them. Mm-hmm. And it's really moving. That's a nice idea. Mm. Uh, we would ask you, ask you, asks you. I can't mm. talk. Ax. We would ax. What the hip hoppers say? Right. We would ax you for your thoughts uh, via text, but we're having some problems with our texts at the moment, listeners, which is why we haven't read any of them out so mm. far. Uh, for that's why we're delaying text. We're going to delay text a little the texts bit more. Actually, work. Otherwise, it's pointless. Otherwise, it's totally meaningless. Also, it's a betrayal of trust. And we can't do that. We don't advocate any kind of trust betrayal. Now let's have another record and then when we come back we're going to have a bit of Stephen based activity. Stephen! Uh, here's a free play for you listeners. This is an artist called Johnny Polonsky and um, it was from about ten years ago. I think this track was produced by Frank Black even and it's a cover of the Nirvana track In Bloom. Hope you enjoy. In Bloom, Johnny Polonsky there, Adam and Joe here on BBC Six Music. Now, ever since we were sent a comic um, called Stephen, which was uh, created by a young man when uh, called Stephen when he was a young boy and he made a comic starring himself. It was kind of an action war comic just called Stephen exclamation mark. Yeah, we thought that was a, 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 a very powerful idea for a hero in the born and, and bond mold. We like the idea of people crying out his name when they're in peril. Um, last week, we played you a clip from a film that included someone shouting Stephen. Uh, very dramatically and excitingly, um, and we're very pleased that a listener to the show, Rowan Dawes, uh, from Herne Hill in London, um, has actually sent us another clip of a mystery movie mm. where someone satisfyingly, dramatically, impactfully shouts, Stephen! Do you know which movie this is? I do. You right. don't, okay. though, do you, Adam Buxton? Let's have a listen. No, I don't. So this is a kind of a non-competitive a uh, fun audience participation thing. Mm. See if you know what movie this comes from. <laughs> That's good, you see. It's Stephen! There's a sort of extra syllable, a desperate extra syllable in there. That's tough. I mean, that sounded old. Did it? Uh, There's a lot going on. See if you, Have a listen again and see if you can tell... What's happening in all those sound effects? Yeah. Oh, there's quite a clue in there. Oh, there's, there's quite a, train a clue in there. Mm, mm. It, it's it's not your conventional sort of a train, but it is it is train a train like movement going is it on. Money that's... train with Wesley Snipes. Good guess, but no. Hmm. Uh, we'll tell you maybe after the next record we'll we'll reveal what that is from. But that's very good. Thank you very much, Rowan. That's a really dramatic rendering of, of the a name good Stephen. Stephen. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we've had a couple of other suggestions of of uh, Stephen. Someone's saying there's a Morrissey record. Uh, where's that email gone that mentions Stephen? I've lost the email. Will oh, no, you marry me? Yeah, uh, I'm responding to your appeal for existing Stephen-related stuff. Towards the end of the Morrissey track, We'll Never Marry, there are some great samples of people shouting out the word Stephen. Mm. That's pretty good. We've got to dig that track up and try and play it. Maybe next week. Yes, yes, exactly. Good idea. Um, okay, well, listen, um, we still haven't fixed our texts, right? Is that no. Case? That's a yeah. bit of a shame, isn't it? Um, well, here's some more music. <laughs> but it's exciting. We've got an amazing cliffhanger non-competitive quiz. We're going to have a record, then we're going to reveal the answers it's like, like a proper radio show yeah it's really exciting first of all here's a uh, uh, uh are we doing the trail first though yeah let's have a little bit of uh sean keveney trail action young mc how how young would he have been though when he done he that? was pretty young i think he was either still at uh, college or just out of college right okay all right fair enough that was no how um before that track we played you a little a stephen clip yeah we, we're gonna hear it again and have you got any have you been thinking adam have you got any guests i wonder if you got any uh emails i've here. got one guest but i'm pretty sure it's wrong we uh, were chit chatting there i did, didn't look at the emails i was trying to think of train-based excitement movies uh all i could think of was mission impossible 
but there's no Stephen involved with that. Mission Impossible One, other trains. Why don't? Well, let's hear that clip once more, and then we'll uh, give it, give it, give the answer. Much hope for Stephen. I think he's a goner. He, he's of course he's not on a train train. He's on a roller coaster. Oh, what's the big movie with a with a man called Stephen getting in t- terrible jeopardy on a roller coaster? You would Final Destination yes. Three. Three exactly. Right. I even watched that one. Yeah, <laughs> it's classic roller coaster action. Yes, it's a good beginning. Final Destination Three. Yeah. If you know a film in which somebody says the word Stephen in a particularly dramatic or exciting way. Do let us know. If you send us an MP3, just like Rowan did, then that's even better. Yeah. Because we don't have to make any effort at all. Massive points to Rowan. Rowan, you're fantastic. You know, Thanks. Rowan also runs Adam and Joe's music MySpace site. Oh, does he? It's a kind of, you know that site. Sure, I, I certainly do. know it. Yeah. So, uh, well done, Rowan. Thank you very much. Thanks, man. Oh, bless you. You're, you're amazing. Now, um, I think our texts are working now. They are coming through in dribs and drabs. Um, but you can always email us. So why not? Let's get down to Text the Nation, the nation's favorite feature. Text the Nation. Text, text, text. Text the Nation. What if I don't want to? Text the Nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. This week on Text the Nation, we are asking for your ideas for kind of punning film titles that haven't been used already. Yeah. From which we can construct the idea for a movie, is that right? Yes. We were, I was watching, uh, while I was away on telly, the film Made in Manhattan. Why were you doing that? Because I like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, There's something about that film I really like. No, are you serious? Yeah, I I don't know why. With Jellog? Yeah, it's just odd. She is a disaster. I enjoy it. Who is the man in that film? Ray Fiennes. It's Ray Fiennes. It's really kind of peculiar casting, and he looks like he's going to kill her and eat her at all points (laughs) in the film. (laughs) And she, it's so ridiculous that she's a maid. She's obviously she hasn't cleaned anything her in her entire life. J Lo. Maybe that's wrong actually, because she's from the block. That's true. And there's a lot of self self She would have cleaned her rocks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's so ridiculous that you, c- I can't but love it. Mm-hmm. But what a title. Made in Manhattan. M-A-I-D. Yes. You know. And uh, this, this arose because a friend of mine is at film school and he was, uh, he's trying to get a short film, you know, commissioned, so to speak, by the lecturers at his film school. He's not having an, a, a lot of luck and he was saying, come on, think of a really killer short film idea. And I was avoiding the subject just by uh, suggesting that he starts with the title. Good idea. And when you look at contemporary movies, a lot of them, you get the the, the suspicion that many of them started at the title. Especially romantic comedies, it seems. Yeah, because um, romantic comedies are usually about some kind of a lie or deception, right? Yeah. Or some kind of double truth. Uh-huh. Uh, and so a double meaning in the title captures that perfectly. Well, the other one, of course, another made one, was mm. made of honour. Yes. I.e., you are constructed from honour, yes. as well as being a maid of honour at a wedding, which is rubbish. I mean, that is a rub- Oh, it's good. It's good. Is I it? think it's good. Ma- made in Manhattan is fantastic. Made in Manhattan She's is good. M- made? Do I have to explain it? Uh, that's good. That's a good one. I'm admitting, <laughs> as bad as that film is with Jell-O. You see, all, you come up with those three words, <laughs> yeah. and the, the film writes itself. That's, that's right. what we're getting at. So we're asking you, can you, can you conjure any kind of phrase, expression, or, or title that sort of is, is an instant movie title? And it doesn't even have to be a good pun. Mm-hmm. If you give us a title, we will develop a film out of it. Just before the news, let's do a quick one. How about okay. this? Can I put you on the spot? Yes. All right, then. Um, third party insurance. Uh, okay, it's a guy. He's at college. He's got a reputation for having amazing parties. Yeah. Uh, he's about to have his third one. <laughs> he's having a party <laughs> war with someone else. Right. I, I, that, that guy, Donnie, well, I've got to do a better party than him this year, otherwise my rep on campus is going to be in the mud. That's a phrase they use in the mud. <laughs> and so it's his third party. Yeah. And, of course, he's very worried. He's having it in his parents' house, and he has to get insurance. Uh, I've got to think of a double meaning for insurance. Oh, God. Uh, but how's that for a start? That's good, man. That's, That's a very good, good start. Just oh, and he's, put you on uh, the spot. his dad's an insurance. Nice. Uh, he's studying insurance. 
<laughs> it's a little bit like risky business. That's good. So that's the idea. We want your, uh, they can be punny or they can just be phrases that you think might make a good movie title. And, and we'll come up with a, we'll try and come up with a movie pitch for you. That's text the nation this week. Work, it's just gone 10.30 here on BBC Six Music. Time for the news. Oh. Peter Bjorn and John with Young Folks. We're in the midst of text the nation and we're asking you to suggest kind of punny phrases it's a hard one to express describe, this, yeah. isn't it? To, to describe but if, if we give you some more examples okay. um people might get the idea we're asking you to suggest titles for films and we will make up the story of the film from the title you suggest that's the simplest way to put it i, I think. suppose so. inspired by made of made yeah. in manhattan and made of honor the more generic the phrase the more likely it is to have multiple meanings that we can then uh extrapolate right from. okay how about this one joe okay um calculated risks calculated risks that's more of an action one uh is it you yeah. want that to be in the action genre could be calculated risks well like, there's obviously one meaning for that uh i can't think of a double meaning though i was thinking of a guy and he's got like a machine right oh uh, yes I, he's a statistician yeah he's a really boring nerdy statistician who has a really boring life mm -hmm. and he gets sucked into some kind of high-grade internet espionage scheme mm -hmm. and he gets out of uh, various situations by using his amazing this is good his math skills right is that uh, i mean that reminds me of eagle eye what is that what's no, the shia labeouf thing uh, that's more like war games right okay yeah but i like the idea of a guy who's amazingly good with maths and yeah. you the audience wouldn't have to be good at maths they would just marvel at his ability to use you know he could measure things by sight uh -huh. he could he he would know probabilities maybe you'd team him up with a very thick man yeah uh who didn't know it none about none <laughs> and was proud of it yeah. you know kind of like an like like a sort of deep south lunatic joe the plumber yeah joe the plumber exactly joe la taxi <laughs> and uh, and they yeah so it's double act and they don't like each other you know it's a frictional buddy thing mm. but the statistician eventually gets them out of situations by using his maths power i like it it's good calculated risks yeah okay how about this one um candy from a baby <laughs> that's difficult right that is difficult uh because while you're thinking about that yes may i say that the, the other example that we had before the news third party insurance we were thinking actually we're missing a trick by just not calling it third party yeah third party would be better that would be much better yeah get yeah, rid yeah. of the insurance thing and then third party could just be about yeah it's the son of a of an insurance man who's having some kind of a a, a party-based feud yeah yeah third party candy from a baby that's a bit too well it's, it's a bit, bit too tricky on the nose, yeah because it? um it would have to be about a baby that <laughs> <laughs> that basically um excretes sweets <laughs> yeah which is a nice idea which is a ni nice I mean, the, idea the, the kids would love that can and, you imagine and um the, the baby's mum would be called candy <laughs> <laughs> so there's you already got a double meaning there but not only does it excrete sweets it excretes <laughs> wonderful new sweets yes that no one's ever invented lollipops <laughs> <laughs> didn't we have them last week we had the um mm. um lolly lolly and then it would, it would be it would be an ethical minefield it would be a sort of aaron brockovich style court uh it, courtroom drama yeah lolly because, the, because candy would be exploiting the baby <laughs> feeding it all kinds of food to try and keep up production of the lollipops uh, <laughs> kevin spacey would play a lawyer who's hired to defend candy <laughs> uh, and loves the sweets yeah he loves the sweets uh, it's a complicated one oscar bait though but then when they're <laughs> oscar <bait. laughs> <laughs> that one's being hotly tipped for an oscar already but then in the climactic courtroom scene mm. right they get the baby they get candy is the baby called candy as well no the mum's called the mum's called candy they get the baby and the baby has to produce <laughs> some lollipops <laughs> for the jury but at that point the, the baby's <gasps> gift deserts it oh, and the no. jury are confronted with actual with pops, actual <laughs> pops <laughs> all of which they have to try right <laughs> wow because the because this is the other ah it's getting complicated now but that's, that's good, good man. though you see candy this is the from kind of thing we want from you listeners <laughs> just just a phrase like candy from a baby and and you know that there's an oscar winning courtroom drama there already so do text us the number is six four zero four six the texts are working now or you can email adam and joe dot six music at bbc dot co dot uk here's a free play joe is this yours bit is of uh, aztec camera 
Nah, this is on the playlist. Oh, you went for Abigail Silk. Oh, I've yeah. given it away. The excitement of um. Okay. So uh, what what exactly are we doing? Sorry, here? mate. I, I confuse things by um jumping the gun there. Yeah, this I've, is a uh, Aztec camera with Oblivious. Do some gun jumping. <laughs> Aztec Camera with Oblivious from 1983. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. Uh, broadcasting from what was described in the press this week from the digital hinterland mm -hmm. uh, of Six Music. Hinterland? Uh, it's a sort of um, in between. No, yeah, it's no when there's land very far off. Neutral zone. Can you see any land? Well, oh, a hint. <laughs> it's a little hinterland. Yeah. Um, but it's a nice place to be. I prefer to be in a hinterland, don't you? Oh, it's nicer on the margins. Yeah, exactly. Stick stick to the margins. Stick, stick to the, the trouble. Don't get in the mainstream, yeah. you'll, get, you'll drown. Stay underground. You know? um, now, Joe, I was having a chat um, with some friends about uh, National Treasures the other day, because I was watching Strictly Come Dancing for the first time, never seen it before. Right. And I sat up and my young son, uh, Frank, who's about six and a half, he couldn't get to sleep, so he came down and he watched some telly with the grown-ups. Oh, it's exciting. Yeah, it was really exciting, and he was having such a good time, and we watched Strictly Come Dancing, and actually it was the perfect show to watch, because everyone was, uh, we had some friends around, and everyone was kind of... Uh, that show's not very on very late, is it? Uh, well, no, but, you know, he's supposed to be in bed and all tucked up by about 7.30. Right. It was about 8.30 or 9, I think, Strictly, mm. on a Sunday night, maybe. It's got some sauce in it as well, hasn't it? It? No, there was it no sauce. It no, was it's completely it was, family friendly. It was very fam family friendly. It was yeah. great. It was perfect, perfect show, and um, obviously hosted by the giantifical um, Bruce Forsyth. Obviously, I mean he is what like a hundred and fifty now, or what is he? He's, he's in his eighties though, isn't mm. he? And he is an extraordinary yeah, figure of a man. Yeah, he's to television what Clint Eastwood is to films. He is undoubtedly though, wouldn't you say, a national treasure as far as yeah. the, oh, the, yeah. the Brits Absolutely. are concerned. British national treasure. Who else? If you had to compile a list of the top ten national treasures, who would you definitely put in there? No question. I would say maybe at number one even mm. Stephen Fry. I mean, right. that's that's a no-brainer, right? right? And I was thinking, like, to qualify as a national treasure, you have to be a fairly uncontroversial figure. Mm. I mean, that's not to say that there have been elements of Stephen Fry's life and career that have mm. taken him into controversial areas. But on the whole, he is much loved by a huge swathe of the public uh, for good reason. Mm. So he would be in there, maybe number one. I would put Wogan on there. Yeah. Wouldn't you think? Yeah. Terry Wigan. Um, it's what about... Yeah. Joanna Lumley. Ooh, good idea. Did you see our program where she saw the Northern Lights? No, I didn't, actually. <gasps> that was very moving. Was it? Yeah. Treasure status. That's, Instant treasure status. That's a good idea, because I was going to ask about female members of the National mm. Treasure Community. Mm. They're harder to come up with. I was thinking of um, Judy Stench. Mm. And, uh... Well, the royal family, uh, have the job of selecting national treasures, don't they? Because they yeah. award them medallions uh -huh. and trinkets. Uh, so all we'd have to do is look at the New Year's Honours list. Has, has, um, has Fry got some honours there? He hasn't got it's nothing. It's about time, isn't it? You've got to give him some honours. Maybe he's turned them down. I mean, you would think that he would be laden with honours, wouldn't mm. you? Mm. He should be. He absolutely should be. Uh, Alan Davies. Give, give some to Alan Davies. Why Alan not? Davies. <laughs> <laughs> well, mm, no, he's very, a very good, talented man, I'm but not he's not mature that, enough. I'm not suggesting that uh, Davies no, should no. be. Okay, how about this? Yes. Anton Deck. Too young. Too young. Yeah. Why? Because it could go wrong for them. You reckon? Yeah. No, it will never go wrong. No, you have them. to be so, uh, old enough that you're really not going to make any mistakes. Listen, Ant and Deck have skirted the shores of controversy, but not by their own the hands. The thing about Forsyth is, if he came anywhere near any controversy, yeah. he, he would keel over. <laughs> you have to be. You have to be. I think so mature that that you take life and the world very gently. Yeah. And that makes you a risk-free zone. I think Ant and Deck do that. Do you? I don't believe that they would ever knowingly court controversy. Oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? Well, it, it means think back a year or, uh, or so. That ago. wasn't their fault, wasn't it? No, that was underlings mm -hmm. in their company, and they still. Paid the price. I, I'm not sure they could go for national treasure status. You're yet talking about the phone fixing scandal. Mm. Um, how about this one, uh, Richard Briers? Briers, yes, yeah. I would say Top ten. Uh, mm. Maybe, I mean, because he means more to our generation, perhaps. Yeah, what's he done recently? That's the other thing, is you've got to keep, you've got to keep visible. Stay in the eyes. Yeah. Keep working. Exactly. Keep on. Briars, no, he hasn't really kept his end up. Come on, Briars, pull your finger out. How about this one? 
no question i would say mm-hmm. top 10 uh attenborough um, oh absolutely re- um the the um not not dickie yeah 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 because dickie's more of a controversial figure but um he's brother- really yeah i'd give him to all the attenboroughs really all attenboroughs yeah 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 i mean what's the other guy's name it's gone out of my head what richard attenborough richard, david attenborough. Attenborough. richard, richard is the director yeah david's the naturalist. david 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 yeah oh speaking of david's jason J- david J- oh, absolutely jay hall yeah well, Only Fools and Horses is a national treasure. It should be projected directly into the eyeballs of all newborn babies. Is that ten? Have I got in this ten? Country. What about Trevor McDonald? Oh, that's a good one. He's a national treasure, isn't McDonut. he? McDonald. Did you see him on the National Television Awards? No. He was I wouldn't doing... watch that if you held a gun to my head. <laughs> <laughs> you missed out. You missed the news that uh, Tennant's stepping down as Doctor Who, then. Don't care. <laughs> oh, my Lord. You're out of control. You're a loose cannon. You're going to stay in the margin with an attitude Loose cannon, like that. that's a good name for a film. Very good. We should get back to Text the Nation. Mm. Right, I'm going to check that I've got ten national treasures Maybe there. we could have some kind of Adam and Joe uh, award that we would give to people. Um, it would be nice to hear a, a, an acceptance speech from Bruce if we gave him an award. I mean, that's what awards are, really, aren't they? Yeah. It's a way to make people uh, come to you. Do you know what I mean? Because you can't refuse an award, whatever it is. You have to respond. Yeah. Otherwise, you seem ungrateful. If we just invented one, it could be brilliant promotion for our show. That's a good idea. We could award it just to amazingly famous people. But who would who would accept an award from us, though, on this list? Stephen they'd Fry? They'd have to. They'd have to respond somehow. Do you think Fry If we accept- sent them an object, yeah. they'd have to get some sort of response. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what object it would a be. A lollipop. <laughs> Not a lolly, a golden lollipop. <laughs> Okay, now, Joe, this is your free choice. What have you got? Yeah, this is a a bit of hippity-hoppity. This is Ugly Duckling with Abigail Silk. Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. (laughs) Yes, it's uh, Text the Nation time here on the Adam and Joe Show on BBC Six Music. Uh, Before that, you heard James with a track called Laid. Can we play a track like that in this current climate? Yes, we can. We just did. Uh, that was from the 4th of May, 2007. And you join us during Text the Nation, where our uh, uh, challenge for you is to suggest possible movie titles uh, to us. And Adam and I are going to extrapolate, a, uh, attempt to extrapolate a film plot from them. It's a bit hard to describe well, this. Well, we're using the formula of well-known phrases, I suppose, aren't we? Yes. Going on the premise that, that, that uh, for a good movie, all you need is the title. Yeah. And we're not, you know, a lot of people have texted in actual puns mm-hmm. uh, with, you know, titles with very obvious puns in them. Like Bite Me, B-Y-T-E. Yeah, yeah which is good, but you, you don't really have to make that much effort. We're looking yeah, for too good. for phrases that, that, that <laughs> don't have an obvious <laughs> double meaning to them. Uh, we can create one. Uh, you know, the, the key here is the film Made in Manhattan. What a brilliant title that is. So we were someone, <laughs> someone said parking meter. It was James, our producer, I think. And then uh, we were, <laughs> we were thinking, that's a good, that's a good title, parking meter. But what about marking Peter? Marking Peter, exactly, is what the film's called. And he's a traffic and warden. He's a traffic warden, exactly. <laughs> uh, how about we've got loads of texts here. All of them are good. Um, so I'll just go through them quickly. Um, James in Bristol says, take me to the bridge. That is very good. Take me, me to the bridge. That could be about a soul singer, uh, like the journey of a, a soul, soul singer. A soul singer who is, um, what's the word? He's uh, conscripted to fight in the army right so it's like a bridge too far <laughs> with a kind of soul guy as a soldier and while the bridge is blowing up or it's going wrong he's singing these amazing songs and at the end there's a scene where they're all being executed by the nazis mm-hmm. and he starts singing a soul song and the nazis start crying we, we cannot shoot him the song is too the good song is too soulful <laughs> that's that's the song it's actually anyway that's quite good isn't it <laughs> that's very good that's from james in bristol thanks you james. Go, james uh a lot of these texts don't have names on them so uh do include your name if you'd like a little shout out hey chaps just this is an anonymous oh no this is from dave actually in paisley just tuned in with our wicked hangover how about this jumping the gun which i just heard you say <clears throat> um jumping the gun jumping the gun well that is a a uh, fashionable movie for kids. It's a bit like Step Up to the Streets. It's about skipping rope competitions. You can't have that for kids with guns in it. Uh, wait, I haven't said it's got it's got guns in it. Ooh. 
But it has, because when I say kids, I mean <laughs> teens. It's like step up to the streets or, or yeah. what's that one called? Uh, you've been served. So it's their inner city jump rope teams. Uh-huh. And uh, that one of them is a gang who have guns. Yeah. And that everything gets quite nasty. And there's a big skip rope payoff in which somebody tries to shoot somebody else. But the lead skipper actually jumps over the gun <laughs> <laughs> and avoids the bullet. Brilliant. Jumping the gun. Very good. Uh, how about this one? A little filmy one. Aspect Ratio. I like that. As- that's a sci-fi movie. Yeah. Aspect Ratio. And, and, and they that's go- to do- Yes. I was thinking they go, <laughs> they go through like a black hole or a yes. wormhole. Yeah. On the other side of the hole, things are stretched. Everything's stretched. Everything's a little bit stretched. Everything's 2.35 to 1. And then they go to another wormhole. And, and it's 16 by 9. And squashy. Yeah. Well, that would be good. It would be like that film Brainstorm, where they actually adjust the aspect ratio while oh, you watch yes. it. So some of the movie would be in 4 by 3. Some of it would be in 16 by 9. I love saying these numbers. <laughs> some of it would be 2.35 to 1. Favourite yeah? aspect ratio? Just Oh, definitely 2.35 to 1. Oh, yeah, just checking. Yeah. How about this? This is anonymous. About time. That's very good. It's a, it sounds a bit like about Schmidt, uh, about time. Well, the hero would definitely be called Johnny Time. Yeah, to, or, or or use the old um, parsley and time thing, right? T h y m e. Or maybe uh, Kevin Tick. Kevin Tick. That's more lateral. Johnny Talk. <laughs> Kevin Tick and Johnny Talk. Or they're the, time cops. They could be sti- um, uh, or, or or Jimmy Stitch. Right. Or Stitch in time. Or we go completely the other way. It's about a very old watchmaker, mm-hmm. and he's never fallen in love. He's devoted his whole life to repairing watches. And it's about time we fell in love. And it ends. <laughs> here's one from Michael Leonard. Mm. Uh, he says, here's a phrase that's bound to be in a rubbish Hollywood thriller at some point. Call waiting. That's good. That's uh, very good. Call waiting. I can't believe no one's used that one yet. Well, that reminds me of Girl 6, the Spike Lee film. Uh-huh. So, uh, like a, te- a telephonist mm-hmm. uh, in the Spike Lee film. She's a dirty telephonist. It wouldn't be the case in this film. It'd no. be a clean, clean one. Uh, and it would be a romance. Yeah, I mean, this is a good one for... Um, How about this? The it's... lady who was in Almost Famous, Hudson. Right. Um, Kate Hudson. Kate Hudson. Yeah. I can imagine her and and McConaughey. Yes. In Call The Waiting. cast of Fool's Gold. Absolutely. Together again. <laughs> wow. And how to lose Box a guy in ten days. Dynamite. Yeah. And what would that be about? They'd be they'd be telephonists in different countries, maybe. Maybe she works for Barclays in India. Right. She works in a call uh, centre. McConaughey maybe plays an Indian character. She works for the Demon Helpline in uh, uh, in Bombay. Right. And uh, she plays an Indian character with a very thick <laughs> accent. <laughs> right. That would be good. She'd get an Oscar for. Yeah. 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 Oscar and not. and, and uh, they fall in love while resetting his preferences. <laughs> <laughs> but he can't commit. Yeah. Right. And the call waiting refers to the mm, to his inability mm, to commit mm, to the relationship. Mm, uh, and that's the thing. Maybe she works for a company called Waiting. Mm-hmm. And then you know you got a call waiting. And his that's name. Another his name is Mark Call. <laughs> and her name's Jackie Waiting. <laughs> And finally, from uh, for the moment, from Michael Leonard also, may contain nuts. That's very good. Uh, now, the obvious way to go would be a sort of uh, Dudley Moore-style comedy. Well, Seth Rogen, surely. Seth Rogen, yes. Moore's yesterday's news, isn't he? Uh, Rogen, well, he's passed away. He's obviously. no longer he's with us. That's a block it's very disrespectful. to the production. Um, or well, CGI, you, you never know. Uh, so Seth Rogen, uh, what's it called again? May, May contain, contain nuts. nuts. He works in a chocolate factory uh, that make chocolate bars. Uh, he's, he's, he's the crazy son of a Willy Wonka style chocolate manufacturer. Uh, and he's having a mental breakdown. <laughs> <laughs> so it does skirt over quite serious issues. <laughs> So he's in uh, hospital. <laughs> when you say skirt over. But he's th- this is the thing. He has these brilliant ideas for chocolate bars, but he's uncontrollable. He's unhandleable. So, yeah. Anything? Yeah, I like it. Yeah. These are all good ideas. Uh, Amazing board meeting scenes where he goes wild. This is the tip of the iceberg. We've got loads to get through. So keep them coming in, uh, ladies and gentlemen. But now, I think it's time for the... We're a bit late for the top of hour. Jingle, but let's have it anyway. It's just, uh, you know, about six minutes past eleven, so it's the top of hour. This is the voice of the big British castle. It is the top of the hour. Oh, that's wonderful. I got so bored with the last hour. I'm glad it's gone. It's exciting and it's new. How do you do? Who's that band then? A Bruce Springsteen band. 
don't know then um no that was the rolling stones band and that was uh let's spend the night together sounding good well done yeah, rolling stones well done. are they national treasures is is mick J- jaggers mm. a national treasure he's a national disgrace he exactly he's on a separate list right he's imprisoned um uh, yeah well let's we'll come back to the national treasures in a bit we got so much to get through we got a lot of texts coming in a man. lot a lot of texts. I got a, lo- a lot of texts thank you so much they're all good as well it's a pleasure man um <laughs> we it's free play it's my free play time right now my free play time right now but what i'm gonna do right i haven't actually picked anything so i'm gonna get you joe cornish to help me select one right um by just whittling some criteria do you ever do this like in, when you get bored uh if you use itunes or a similar so kind you've of got your laptop program. open here in the studio and you've got yeah. your uh, itunes um and you can select the music on your computer by you've got various, your music library there yeah by various um you know in various categories uh, uh the length of the song the artist the album the date you added it or whatever or the date it was created or whatever mm. um and so sometimes like you might have an afternoon of of listening to just songs that begin with the letter f fantastic you know afternoon that would be what what fun so maybe that'll be one of the criteria we use but for the time being i want you to um give me a length of time between one and two minutes okay i want to uh, uh, minutes and seconds between one and two minutes yeah well, i'd like a one minute 37 second song all right one minute point three seven i'm gonna find That's the perfect length for a song and this is from welcome. obviously listeners this is from my um mp3 player just what i happen to have loaded on it but it's a you know it's like 60 gigs worth of stuff one minute th- how much did you say 1.37 1. 1.37 1. well, as close as you can get to it Okay, we've got about 25 uh, And whatever, you, whatever song fits this criteria you're going to play. Yeah. Whatever it is. <clears throat> no, it, not if it's sweary, obviously. Okay, yeah, Otherwise but, but, we'll but, be but in a... swearing aside, if, if, it's, if it's fit for broadcast, whatever it is, you will play it. I think so. You're not going to put a shame filter on, you have to be honest. Oh, it's not a very good selection. We've got loads of, um, I've got my Harry Potter... Uh, <laughs> That's good, I like there. the sound of this. So what's the track that comes <laughs> closest to one, one minute 37? Well, they're all, I've got loads of one minute 37 Okay, tracks. well, we need another criteria, so okay. we'll it down. Another criteria. Uh, oh, no, I haven't thought this through. Um, okay, right, here we go. I'm, I'm loading the tracks, all the one minute 37 tracks, onto a separate playlist. Good, yes. So now you have to give me... Um, letter of the alphabet. A letter of the alphabet, yeah. Okay, we're gonna go for. If I went for H, it would definitely be Harry Potter. Ah, uh, no, not necessarily. No, that's true because it might be Dobby's theme. <laughs> um, as a D, uh, I'm gonna go for the letter P. P. Okay. Uh, L M N O. L M N O. We don't have a P. Okay, go for a Q. Uh, closest to P. Closest to P. O or R. Uh, let's go for R. Oh. I think R is a letter with which uh, lots of song oh, titles don't start. Don't have any R either. This isn't working. Uh, closest we've got to R is <coughs> T. Really? All right. Well, T. T's good. I like T. It's um. Oh, it's spoken word. It's Jerry Seinfeld. Um, taboo topics. He's having. A, he's doing. <laughs> That's an not very good, is it? Well, it's not going to have any swearing in it because it's Seinfeld. Mm, you never know. Oh, this oh, isn't working. This isn't working. Um. Well, listen, why don't we uh, have a think about it and play the next record on the on the playlist thing? Yeah. Yeah? It's a good idea. I think <laughs> it's a lot, not a good idea, no, I is think, it? I think it's a, the worst idea Adam, I've ever it's had. Good. I think a lot of listeners out there are thinking, <laughs> well, that segment didn't really work, but it was a good idea, and we like Adam, so... 1 minute 37 was a stupid time. I shouldn't have had that. <laughs> well, between 1 and 2 minutes really does whittle it down to, to short songs. I do, mean, do, most songs are around 3 minutes. Do another time, quickly, quickly, quickly. Okay, let's say 3 minute 12. 3 minutes and 12. 3 minutes and 12. Okay? Fast now, because people are getting bored at home. <laughs> <laughs> They're thinking of tuning over to who's on Radio 2? Richard Allenson. Yeah, no, no. 3 yeah. minute 12. 3 minute 12. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, okay. okay. We could have new listeners who've been bumped here. Right. Keep them um, interested. Okay, three minute twelve. That's good. That's good. That's yes. good. Uh, now that's... you're going to have to drag them all into a playlist. This is very laborious. Uh, all right, I'll do that during the next um, song. What is the next song? The next song is uh, is Howling Bells. Uh, we're going to just uh, get under the hood of this idea and tweak it a bit. We'll be back in a second. Here's Howling Bells with Into the Chaos. Howling Bells with Into the Chaos. Re- that is released on November the 17th, and they're currently working on their second album, which will be released in 2009. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. Okay, I um, put all the songs from my ipod that are three minutes and 12 seconds long into a separate playlist now this is, this is fun <laughs> isn't it um now 
a letter of the alphabet? Uh, I'm going to go for B. B. OK, we have got three. We've got... Uh, oh, hang on. Uh, you're just going to tell me what they are? No, 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 I'm not. Of course I'm not. Of course you're Why not. Why would I do that? Um, OK, then. Uh, number from one to three. <laughs> nice question. <laughs> Two. Two. OK. It's Jackie Me Too with Black Organ. What's that? It's a bit of reggae. Hmm. And I think it's... That'd be an interesting film I think title. it's instrumental. Well, we better check it because we can't take any risks. Hang on, I'm just going to... It's instrumental. Yeah? I'll burn it off. This is exciting. <laughs> I mean, could, could we this win is it? Not, this is not the right Saturday to do, do a fly we... by the seat of the pants. <laughs> <laughs> can we get some segment. kind of award for this idea? Yeah. This segment? You this is the it, worst idea I've ever had. <laughs> All right? It's a good idea. Okay. I'm going to let it lie now. <sighs> Listen, can we have the textination jingle? And get over the thing. I mean, I've got Jackie Me Too burned off. Listen, but, but before the jingle, can I just say that I want Terence Stamp to be cast in the big screen adaptation of the stage musical Stomp. Well, you know, and we then had the another... trailers will go Stamp, Stomp. Yeah. <laughs> just something I'd like to have. We did have an idea, a stamp based idea. Let's do the jingle, though, before we get into that. Okay, yeah, jingle. Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. Yes, Text the Nation uh, this week is uh, to do with you suggesting titles that could possibly be, or phrases that could possibly be film titles, and we will make up the story of the film for you. Uh, they have to have, they don't, they don't have to have anything really. It's just a string of words that could be a. Uh, a film title. I can't, I'm getting exhausted trying to explain it, so we'll just assume you... Bob from know. Hammersmith. He suggests First Class Stamp. Terence Stamp is accidentally wrapped in a box and mailed to a convention <laughs> discussing... <laughs> <laughs> a convention which is discussing the welfare state, and Stamp manages to convince the committee to let pensioners send packages by post for free. I'd say that's a BBC4 drama. The film ends with the bill being passed and stamped reading the end what <laughs> uh that thank you very much bob from hammersmith That's a good idea. uh that was uh, very nice how about this one um dear diary dear spelt d double e r fantastic uh dear diary well that is possibly just a title for a natural history documentary uh, -huh. uh like a bill oddy style thing of following the life of a deer yeah uh, but it could also be about a woman that falls in love with a deer mm -hmm. uh, and writes about it in her diary. It's like Bridget Jones's diary. Or if you wanted to take it high concept, you could call it Deer Diary Hunter. What? Oh, it doesn't matter. Um, like Deer Hunter. Oh, nice. I like it. Thank you. How about this from Sue in King's Cross? He's got his father's eyes. Well, that <laughs> reminds me of Jeepers Creepers. Uh, where he steals the people's eyes, that horror film. Yeah. He's got his father's eyes. Oh, wow. That I would mean, be that's a, good a bit horror. too descriptive. Right. Yeah. That's, too horrific. That's so literal. I mean, you don't, I don't need to say anything. Okay. For, for this, a rom com, this is ideal, from Samuel in Manchester. A game of two suaves. Right. Uh, well, mm, that would be a bit like uh, Trading Places. Yeah. And it would be about two very rich men who have some kind of a bet. Uh, it would be a remake of Trading Places. Uh -huh, or Dirty Rotten Scoundrels. Yeah, it would be a kind of, um, uh, what do you call it? What, like My Fair Lady style makeover thing. Uh huh. A kind mm. of a transformation mm -hmm. swap a thon. But again, you see, that's too, it's already too punny. Uh huh. I, I, I want the most challenging possible, t the title that suggests nothing, that has no resonance at all. Okay. Parking meter was good. Parking meter is good, isn't it? That's good. Uh, Okay, how about this? Off the record. Right. Off the record. That's from Russ in Southampton. Well, that's obviously about a uh, a record company, isn't it? It's about uh, maybe a record company in the 60s, uh, like a swinging 60s Soho-based record company. Um, and it's just the, it's a sort of um, confessions <laughs> of a window cleaner style uh, sex romp. Yeah. Uh, about a young lad who works as the tea boy in, in a... Um, joe meek style you know uh record label in the 60s i like it and he just has ch chirpy adventures <laughs> <laughs> he's off the record yeah. oh you're off the record mate <laughs> <laughs> john in just cheshire flop, suggests one. these are good these are good john please do not bend 
Please do not bend. Well, that is... <laughs> I don't need to go into that. I think our audience are capable of uh, seeing that film in their heads. Okay, themselves. how about this one? Six of one, half a dozen of the other. That's very good. Now, that's a sequel to um, Cheaper by the Dozen. Yeah. And that's about a family who have 12 children... They divorce. They have to take six of the children each. <laughs> Terrific. <laughs> and then the man with six of the children uh, falls in love with another woman. There was one with Dennis Quaid in there that was uh, a little bit like that as well. I can't remember the name of that one. Um, but that was very similar. Or it could be uh, about robots. Mm -hmm. Six of one could be the name of a robot. Right, like seven of nine. Yeah, exactly. Um, he's got another suggestion, Carbon Footprint. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, mm, That's like amazing. It. There must be something in production called Carbon Footprint already. That's very good, though, John, from Cheshire. Thank you very much. Well, can't we have to think of a storyline for Carbon Footprint. Yeah. Can you think of one? Um, I'm just thinking of Bigfoot. Well, there's there's a... Oh, well, you've got to have an eco tie-in. It's like a serial killer yeah, movie, yeah, yeah. right? With a, with a, um, an eco-warrior. It's is an the, action film, I think. Is, right. Isn't it? Because action films sometimes have really dry titles like that. Isn't the villain in Quantum of Solace uh, an eco-warrior? Supposedly. Something to do with water. Yeah, right. Water supplies. Um, I, think. I haven't seen it yet. I think that's the... It's going to be the new thing, is to cast yeah. eco-warriors as villains. You know what I mean? Just to get their own back. Thanks a lot, Okay, the guy's name is Carbon. Yeah. Johnny Carbon. Jimmy Carbon. Yeah, and he has a footprint of death. Do you know what I mean? When you call in Johnny Carbon, yeah. he's an enforcer. He enforces ecological rules with violence. <laughs> <laughs> he is licensed to kill people that don't recycle correctly. <laughs> so he goes around checking the weight of people's bins, uh, kicks their doors in, if he finds yeah, you've got any, yeah. like, plastic fantasy. packaging that is non-recyclable mm. yeah, in yeah, the yeah, recycling yeah. bin, he kills you. He stomps on you. Right. Exactly. And the, the poster is him with his foot on a housewife's face. <laughs> because she's... <laughs> and a big gun. Because she's put a yogurt pot in there exactly. that shouldn't have been oh, in there. Stupid woman! Carbon footprint. <laughs> <laughs> That's excellent. Thank you very much, John from Cheshire. Okay, we've got, we got yet more of these to get through, um, but let's have some more music now before we... Uh, so we're not going to play Jackie Me Too, then, I'm guessing. <laughs> Black Organ. You know what? I was such an idiot because if only I'd lied about it, the one next to Black Organ was Blue Jean by David Bowie. But I thought, safeguarding trust, I can't lie to, to can't the... can't play two Bowie tracks in a show either. Right, right. That would be too much, too much but Bowie. Blue Jean. I overload. just met a girl named Blue Jean. It's a good track. But I couldn't do it. Listen, it was lie. a heroic failure. It we was... really appreciated the uh, intention. Yeah. That it was a disaster was a shame, <laughs> but we'll live. <laughs> so here's the choral instead. That's the choral with Dreaming of You. This is Adam and Joe on BBC Six Music. We were talking earlier about hot, hottie bodies. Mm -hmm. Hot water oh, bottles. It's even better said in a, in a really bad Australian stroke New Zealand accent. Hottie body. <laughs> oh, it's nice to say. A couple of people have uh, suggested that we're missing a trick with hottie body. You've got to use the word water as well. Right. Alan Vickers says the definitive name is Walter Hottle Bottle. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he calls it right walter hottle bottle yeah or well, he says the definitive name is walter hottle bottle please conform <laughs> alan suffolk so that's more like an edict please confirm is he Con saying? no he says conform conform, <laughs> conform. oh i see Finn. we have to use walter hottle bottle i like that i like turning an object into a person is always good isn't sure, it absolutely it's including the, the the water element there as well that was one more Yes. John in Edinburgh says, you're missing a trick there. It's not a hottie botty. That's just foolish and ignores the vital component. It's a hottie wotty botty. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. I wasn't aware of any of these. To me, it was all... Uh, so the whole you know, new world has opened up for you. A new fantastic point of view. Unbelievable smells. <laughs> Indescribable <laughs> smells. It's just gone. 11.30, it's time for the news here on Six Music. Good effort. That's Santo Gold with Say Aha. And when I say good effort, I mean that was really enjoyable. Well done, Santa Gold. Why hasn't the drinks company Fanta mm -hmm. invented a Santa? Uh, the Fanta Santa. Well... And he's like Santa, yeah. but he's orange, like Fanta, and he's bubbly. That's good. I mean, Fanta's owned by Coca-Cola, I think, isn't it? Well, that's a myth. The whole uh, Santa Coke thing. Is it? Yeah, they kind of, I think they kind of invented the costume, but the idea that they, um... No, obviously they didn't invent St. Nick. Well, no, that's what you're implying. They you're invented the colour scheme, didn't they? Wrote the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> they, 
No, the red and the white. Was I think a, so. Was that a... might even be a myth as well. I know, I'm sure I've read something about that being a myth. But anyway, S Santa Fanta. I like it. It's Christmas time. Here comes. And then he smacks you in the face really hard. That's the tango. Ah, Man. The no, tango he couldn't do that. Santa. The Santa Fanta. He just pours fizzy drink down the chimney. Fanta Santa. So yeah. So you wake up in the morning and your front room is uh, soaked with an inch of uh, sticky um, fizzy drink. Fizzy goop. Yeah. Um, or you could just stick your head in the chimney and open your mouth. I mean, it would, you'd get a lot of soot on you and yeah, stuff. Yes, so that would be the second campaign. Yeah. The first campaign, he'd come down and, and it'd be Christmas morning and the whole front room is soaked with uh, Fanta. We had a chimney fire the other day because we lit a fire um you know without getting your chimneys cleaned yeah you gotta and, get cleaned annually oh man and we forgot about the whole can be very chimneys. dangerous yeah boy. yeah suddenly there was flaming debris coming down mm -hmm. the thing and like piling into the room it was really scary that's a good to... public service announcement and my wife wanted to call the fire brigade and stuff and i spritzed it and um calmed it all down and fixed the problem but i think there was a bird's nest up there or something <gasps> it was no good and no birds in it I'm glad to say. I hope not. But, uh, yeah, don't, you know, be careful with those chimneys. Fanta Santa. Fanta Santa. Smack! No, that's the tango one. Okay, here's some suggestions for Song Wars next week. We asked right. you to think of shows, TV shows, that we could do a new theme, a uh, theme tune for, right? Yeah. We've got loads of ideas that have come in. I'll just rattle through a few of them now. Hello, Adam and Joe. This is from Sarah in London. Could you create a new theme tune for Spooks? Do you watch Spooks? Never watched Spooks. I don't watch Spooks either, so maybe <coughs> that's not such a good that idea. That could be good, though. She says, uh, I watched it last night. It's a great show, but the theme tune sounds like Casualty. It doesn't quite fit. Mm -hmm. Um... Tom says, please do a new title track for Friends. It's on at least 5,000 times a day on channels like oh, ITV3. I've done that already. Yeah, you we did. I did a, a Friends thing for the Adam and Joe show. If you go on YouTube, That'll you can find YouTube. it. I did a hilarious... Friends, it was called. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, David in Exeter says, good morning, Adam and Joe. I believe that the Antiques Roadshow theme is long overdue for some lyrics. Mm, that's it's about true. about time I had something to sing along to on a Sunday that's evening. That's true. So he's talking about keeping the original music. Uh-huh. We've got to look into that see whether it's uh usable in the podcast but we should just go ahead and do we it just willy, go ahead and do it, yeah, willy okay. nilly because it'll be people will be able to listen nilly willy yeah willy nilly That's a good name for a film as well don't do that willy nilly We've free willy a, nilly free willy nilly um thanks david in exeter for that one That's the prequel to free willy alton uh no it's alton jane from Alton in Hampshire. She says, Surely the East Enders theme tune is seriously in need of updating. Oh, I feel that might be, that turf might have been covered by other people in the past. Oh, really? Yeah. Something more uplifting, more cheeky chappy. I am going to smash your face. <laughs> <laughs> oh my you... gosh, I've had a terrible accident. <laughs> <laughs> Too easy. Yeah. Good morning, Adam and Joe. Um, this is from Paul, who lives in Amsterdam, and he doesn't get any work done either, he says. I should have hooked up with him while I was over there. Yeah. He says, please do QI. It's got you a... See, that's a good idea. Yeah, he says, it's got a dreadful middle-aged BBC-employed white guy making cod reggae theme tune, which lets down an otherwise fantastically entertaining Very true. show. Very true. Think of the fun you could have with the lyrics, he says. Good idea. Um, this is from Liam now. Hi there, Adam and Joe. You should maybe think of composing a theme tune to a show that has no theme. Like mm. Lost or Heroes. Does Lost not have a theme? No, it just goes... Oh, that's a theme, though. Not really. Not really. I mean, that's a disgrace, if you ask me. Well, they don't have time for themes in America. You might lose interest. <laughs> so to get on with the story. But that's a good idea. I like the idea of doing a Lost uh, theme, maybe. Mm. It could be... It it's could a good be... one for you. You watch that program. Yeah, I like it. I'm looking forward to the new series. <laughs> Um, <laughs> what's that that that's was back my, in the nutty room that was my it? i'm excited about lost thing <laughs> we've got so many ideas here um okay here's here's is an that, idea is lost jj abraham yes here's an idea he, that a few he, people have he likes of. my quantum of solid song oh no he does yeah yeah um fran says the way i see it there's no other option but to revamp the songs of praise themes mm. theme, theme tune mm. it's been stuck in the past for a decade i'm sure the adam and joe treatment will be sensitive to its classical mm -hmm. and religious traditions whilst <laughs> bringing it right back into the noughties classical music is the only type of music that you two haven't really attempted and very to true. be frank i've been very disappointed by this well it doesn't usually have a lyrical component does it well i suppose it could be operatic or mm -hmm. um choral or something what are you mm. leaning towards from those suggestions so far well i'm leaning heavily towards qi because i agree completely with those sentiments i yeah. think it's a, a i mean there's something attractive about that theme tune about the middle-aged kind of it's hopelessness comforting. of it yeah right. it's just a, a, like a little old man having a bit of a skank 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> having a mild, non-hip-threatening skank. That's right, that's what the show's like. And finally, from Frankie, how about a new theme tune for Skins, the E4 drama I about like teenagers? That. The current theme tune is all a bit too light and fluffy and doesn't really refre reflect yeah, th that's all the true. bad the behaviour The titles are terrible on. for Skins. Yeah. Yeah, that's very true. So thank you very much for all those suggestions. Those are excellent. Well, we'll have a think during the week, and yeah. uh, so that'll be next week's Song Wars. We should wrap up Text the Nation after this as well. We've got so many things to respond to. Is it my free choice? Yeah. No. Uh, is it? Oh, no, it's not. No, it's a bit it, of... Oh, it's Siguros. It's Siguros. Is this the video where they're all running around naked in the forest? Possibly. I think I saw their new video, and it's full of beautiful people just naked in a forest. Where did you see it? I saw it on a, on a DVD that came free with a magazine. Oh. Yeah. You wouldn't be allowed to see it on YouTube, because there's no nudeness. Mm. Um, Siguros with Vid Spillum Endelaust. Text the nation. Text, text, text. Text the nation. What if I don't want to? Text the nation. But I'm using email. Is that a problem? It doesn't matter. Text. We've had a wonderfully overwhelming response to Text the Nation today, asking you for phrases that could be turned into the titles of films uh, very easily. And we're kind of pitching you ideas. I'm putting Joe on the spot by throwing some of the phrases you've suggested at him and seeing what he comes up with. And we've got a few great movies that I'm looking forward to seeing in the movie houses <laughs> <laughs> all lined up. And here's um, two or three more just to finish off the feature today. How about this one? This is an anonymous one. Um... Buy one, get one free. But I was thinking, buy Juan, get Juan free. Yes, it's exactly. It's a Hispanic uh, gentleman that uh, arrives in New York and he puts himself on the game. <laughs> and he brings his twin brother over as well. As a gentleman lover. Doubles his money. <laughs> <laughs> the they're both called Juan. Yes. You buy Juan, you get Juan free. Okay. Mrs. Um, That's a stereotypical accent, and I'm sorry. Exactly. Okay, how about this? Jane in Muswell Hill suggests mm. Rabbi in the Headlights. Uh, mm, again, that writes itself, doesn't it? Uh, it's a rabbi, he's in the headlights. It's hard to think beyond the title for that one. Yeah. It's not broad enough. Radiohead video. Um, yes, exactly. I mean, it's a strong image. The headlights, <laughs> the rabbi. The rabbi. <laughs> he starts. I mean, what? Well, it's a brilliant opening. What? Why? Why is the rabbi running? Who's chasing him? Yeah. Well, see, now it's unfolding. It is unfolding, but I can't answer any of those questions. I think only Jane knows. Okay. What uh, the rabbi's running from? I'm worried of insult about insulting rabbis. Sense and sensibility. Sense. C e n t s. Mm, wow, these have inbuilt puns. Mm. I want. I, we want really stark. You know, solid. How about this? Punless this, ones. this is good. This is good. How about uh, this is from Matt in Lancaster? How about Plain Jane, a film about an average-looking air hostess Brilliant. who has to save passengers by flying an out-of-control plane, thus getting together <laughs> with a fella at the end or something? <laughs> says Matt. I like the idea that that she she might land the plane and maybe she's in love with the guy that brings them in. You know, that waves the paddles. Yeah. And she brings it in, and, and, and the nose would stop just before it taps mm -hmm. Jim. And then she'd climb out of the window, and they'd have a kiss. And uh, also, she has a makeover in midair. Right. So by yes. the end of the film, she's not so plain. Very good. Uh, that's, that's a goer. Thanks, Matt. That was fantastic. He's written the whole thing for us. Excellent. Um, okay, how about this one? Uh, Dear Adam and Joe, Tim in Wellington's, uh, Wellingborough Tim says, in Wellington's. He says, Tim, I got some Wellingtons on. No. I've just finished an assignment on ecology. Please mm. could you come up with a film called The Phosphorus Cycle? You see, that is brilliant. The Phosphorus Cycle. Uh, that's a bit like the Parallax View. It's a conspiracy thriller. Uh, the Phosphorus Cycle. I don't know what it... But, but it involves things glowing very brightly in, in, in the dark. Uh, man, um, I can't think of anything else. Maybe he's a cyclist, because mm -hmm. that's a play on the word cycle, isn't it? And he's called Dan Phosphorus. Dan Phosphorus, and he's an Olympic cyclist, and he uh, he just cycles. It's a sports movie. <laughs> <laughs> it's less exciting than it started out. Yeah, it's a sports movie. It's and finally, uh, finally, how about this? Inkjet printer. That's good. Inkjet printer. Uh, inkjet is a new type of stealth plane. The inkjet printer. You oh, said it, it's struggling. good before, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, before, and then failed to come up with something good. Well, no, it's good because it's so tough. Inkjet 
printer. That's from uh, that was from Michael in Brighton. But how about this one more final one? Wait, you know we can't. Mm. Okay, it's a difficult going. one. Oh, you you want to crack that one, do you? Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure I'm going to. Another one. Last one. Dave Duster says, "Chest of Drawers." Chest of Drawers is is very good, but again, that's uh, an adult film. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much indeed for all your suggestions, your texts and emails for Text the Nation. Uh, we really appreciate them. It's time for Joe's Free Choice now. Yeah, this is by a guy called Sweet Charles. I don't know much about uh, Sweet Charles. Do you, Adam? He's very sweet. We've liked this song for many years. Uh, we don't know anything about it, really. It appeared on a, on a compilation that we both Is this the urban had. one? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a smash. Uh, this is called Yes, It's You. <laughs> Sweet Charles with Yes, It's You. If you know anything about Sweet Charles, do let us know. But we're coming up to the end of the sh show now. Thank you very much to everybody who's texted or emailed or even just listened. We hope you've enjoyed it. Yeah, we really appreciate it. Maybe you've never listened to the show before. In which case, let me tell you, if you thought it was a bit raggedy, it was unusually raggedy this week. That's the deal. But if you thought it was super slick, it was unusually slick this week. Uh, normally it's a little bit more raggedy. Um, I'm off to the shops to buy Dead Space. What's Dead Space? It's a video game. Ooh, what happens? Uh, you're a spaceman and it's scary. Do you have to be 18? Probably. Ooh. And I might go and see the Quantum of Solace. Ooh! <laughs> Exciting. Yes, it's gonna uh, be a good weekend. Record, uh, record opening ever. That's right, highest box office Five opening average. Five million. In the UK. Wiping the floor with the previous record holder, Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Both British productions. G. Well yeah. done, Britain. Well done, Britain. You see? Um, and one one day, that could be Rabbi in the Headlights. It opening. will be <laughs> <laughs> Rabbi in the Headlights. The lowest opening weekend ever. <laughs> for that massive opening weekend. No, seriously, thank you very much indeed for all your texts. And, and sorry if we didn't read out a, a, a thing that you sent in and you think, oh, they'll definitely read this out. Um, we really appreciate all of them and um, we just couldn't read all of them out. Um, and we'll be back next week. Don't forget, you can listen again to the show via the BBC website or there'll be uh, an edited highlights podcast available online from about 5 p.m. today. Yeah, that's right. We're just going to sneak off right now and record some brand new links for it. Whoa. So that'll be exciting. Get all kinds of extra stuff on the podcast. Um, now we're going to leave you with uh, a classic Radiohead session. Stay tuned for Liz Kershaw and have a fantastic week and be careful on bonfire night, won't you, listeners? Mm. Take care and we'll be with you again on Saturday. Bye. Love you, bye.